You may not be able to tell, but um, I got a thing for handhelds. Just as much as home consoles for that matter. But as a guy who tends to enjoy his pocket-sized gaming experience, sometimes even prefers it, these past couple years have been very kind to me. The Steam Deck dunked on the scene, the ROG Ally is now a surefire competitor, and it's only good news for the future as the winds are hollowing for a Switch successor. And while PlayStation is gearing up for its handheld but uh, home-only device, so I guess that doesn't really count. And those are just the heavy hitters. We haven't even talked about stuff like the Playdate or the retro handheld scene that's just been popping off recently. But while things are the best they have ever been, I can't help but think about some of the stuff we may have lost with some of the stuff we've equally gained. Now, there's two very basic reasons for why I've always gravitated towards handheld consoles. One, first and foremost, is because of the flexibility. The flexibility to take it with me wherever I go, to breakfast, to the laundromat, on a plane, to work, you get the point. But the second reason is because I've always felt that games developed for handhelds were distinctly different than those that you can play on home consoles. Not better, not worse, just specific to the design of the hardware in such a way that a home console experience couldn't be replicated on a handheld just as much as a handheld experience couldn't be replicated on a home console. Until, well, this came along. It wasn't until the Switch where handhelds as a whole began really replicating that couch console experience, but on the go and well, at home too. And look, I know Vita Islanders are gonna flood the comments and say that the Vita did it first with the PSTV, but my counterpoint is that the Turbo Graphics did it first back in 1990 with the Turbo Express, except that thing ate up like six AAA batteries. All I'm saying is that the Switch nailed it. Since 2017, when the Switch was released, it seems that that's just where the handheld market is going. Or at least that's the case for PC handhelds. Curiously enough, after Sony finally put its dreams in the handheld market to rest with the Vita, it's not Xbox that steps up to take its place, but Valve of all things. And well, it's been a dream come true. This is a thing where Microsoft and Sony console exclusives can be experienced on a handheld, on the go, and it's also dockable? Amazing. The thing is though, the world of handheld gaming in 2023 is a multi-faceted one. One that has been rapidly changing over these past few years specifically. In fact, it's the most interesting and diverse it has ever been because tucked away from the AAA world of Switches and Steam Decks are these little dudes that are accomplishing things that simply have not been done before. Some are for preservation, others for emulation. And then we got this one that's just beating to its own drum. In one corner, we have the retro handhelds with stuff like Anbernic and the Retro Pocket. These are handhelds built solely for emulation and they are a massive scene. Start looking into them and you will find a rabbit hole of a ton of options. And in the mix are some really solid, well-manufactured pieces of hardware. This little fella that I got is the Anbernic RG353M, which is an absolutely absurd title, but goofy title aside, this thing is a solid piece of hardware. And by solid, I mean like, it even has like a metal casing. And something I'm excited about, an HDMI out. So that means you could potentially plug it into a CRT TV to play some of these games, you know, on this thing. Not that you need to do that. Then over here, we have the Playdate, which can be perceived as a toy-like handheld, but has games that simply cannot be played anywhere else, but this one bit hand cranked D-pad two button like thing. It's a niche, unique, and still undeniably super cool thing to have in your arsenal of handhelds. Then there's the legacy preservers, the analog pocket, which I don't have one, but it's super cool because it actually plays the games natively from their cartridges on this new piece of hardware with a sweet, cool screen. Oh, and of course, mobile. But as someone who has a buttload of handhelds, both new and old, something did occur to me while I was making this video. And that is, there isn't really a one and done ideal solution here, which can be, well, seriously intimidating, even overwhelming to anyone who wants to get into handheld gaming because, well, where do you start? 
See, they all serve their own specific purpose, each of course with their own pros and cons. The Steam Deck is an absolute powerhouse, but it's also a big old chonker. And the result is that I don't always feel compelled to take it with me when I'm traveling, especially on a plane, because it can take up a lot of space in my bag. And I just don't know if I wanna lug this thing around. The Switch is fantastic, but the library can be a little limited depending on what you're playing at a certain point in time. Then there's the retro handhelds like the Anbernic, which is, well, you know, for retro games. Then there's mobile gaming, which I have warmed up to over the past year, but still, if it was up to me, I'd rather not use my phone as much as I can help it. The result is that I kind of have to pick and choose what I want to bring with me depending on what it is I'm playing at that moment, or at least the intentions of what it is I want to be playing. And it kind of reminds me of another hobby I have, which is photography. I have multiple cameras, multiple lenses, and all of them are meant for different scenarios. I have my camera for making videos, I have a camera for taking pictures, I have a film camera in Instax, and of course, I have my phone. It allows me to adapt to my scenario or whatever it is that I want out of that scenario. It also means I have a sick arsenal and a bunch of shit that I have to figure out where to put. Now, I suppose the positive side in all this kind of harkens back to my initial point, which is flexibility. Sure, we don't have like a one and done solution, but instead we have a ton of options in which people can choose from to get the most out of what it is they want in the first place. But for everything we've gained in tech and flexibility, I can't help but feel like we've lost some stuff along the way too. Which brings me back to my second point. When handhelds try to emulate the console experience, what's lost is the experiences that are made and tailored for handheld and handheld alone. It's this ongoing obsession that I have with games that were built specifically for the hardware they were made for. Stuff like the DS, the 3DS, hell, even the Vita. But it's an art that I think we've lost. As games become more homogenized and the experience begins to be more or less the same everywhere across all these consoles, there's something of a lost art from the intent of what a console was meant to do and the games that ultimately spawn from it. For me, my lifestyle quirk is that I tend to read a lot of books at once, usually at different times a day for different kinds of reasons, but handheld gaming basically allows me to do the exact same thing, but with games. It feeds into this whole mentality I have that I treat games as books. Now sure, movies and books are experienced relatively the same exact way, but that's the thing that makes games so unique as a medium. They are art that are made within the reflection of the technology that they are designed for, which makes them distinct, especially when you realize that games that are designed for the 3DS and DS can't easily be played on stuff like a Steam Deck and an Ally. So they're kind of bound to these things and also at the same exact time, lost. Now the exception to all of this in our current state is the play date. It's the only console currently that is delivering games that can be only experienced and played on the play date. The issue, however, is that it is so niche and more of a novelty since one, it is not readily available and is produced in small batches, and two, the games themselves are rather bite-sized, which is totally fine, but doesn't fulfill my personal preference when it comes to more narrative-driven experiences. As I mentioned earlier, these are the things that limit the play date to being a toy-like device. So what's the takeaway? The experience is tied to the tech, which is kind of an obvious statement. But what I'm trying to say is the tech defines the experience, which can mean different things to different kinds of people depending on the different circumstances that they're under. Kind of like how taking a picture can look different based on the camera you use. It's still art, it's just art that's reflective of the device that it was made with. And that's the point that I'm kind of trying to make with handhelds. Like cameras, there really isn't an all-encompassing perfect device. Instead, the trade-off is that we have the luxury to be able to tailor our gaming lifestyle to a specific sort of thing. Don't know if you'd call that art, but uh, beauty's in the lens of the beholder. So sure, there may not be an ideal Swiss army knife console, but the variety that exists in 2023 allows us to get so granular and specific about our gaming needs 
when we're on the go, which is not a luxury that has existed until this year. Or at least, that's what I think. You let me know what you think, because in the meantime, I'm gonna be playing Pit Cross 2 on my Game Boy Pocket, because it makes me happy. And the music is just fantastic. Oh, 